Hello everybody, my name is Saidi, and today we're going to be using Dolly 2 to generate this 3D chrome type mask, and then using two other free websites to help turn it into an SVG that Blender can use. We're going to be using three different websites to make this. We're going to be using Dolly, which is the AI to generate it. We're going to be using Remove BG to remove the background for free, and Convert IO to convert it to the file we need for Blender. Getting started in Dolly, this is the prompt I have typed out, chrome type, tribal pattern mask, 2D, black and white, vector image, high quality, clean edges. You can do anything along this lines. I just find that the keywords tribal pattern and 2D are very important to get the effect we want. So let's click on that, get it going. Dolly is free to use, you get 15 credits a month, and then after that, they uh, you have to buy more. As you can see up here, I have nine credits left. Um, I'm actually, let's try deleting chrome type because it's giving us this sort of chromey one on the left, and I want more like this one and this one instead, so. Hopefully getting rid of the word chrome type might get rid of the chromey sort of looking masks. Okay, there we go, that's what we're looking for. So I'm just going to select this one, download it. Then we're going to go to remove.bg. The link for all of these will be in the description. And then we're just going to drag this and drop it onto there. This was from when I was testing it before. Click download. You can also do this with shapes like this. I was test testing it. If you get rid of the word mask and only do tribal pattern, you get stuff like this, but I like the whole mask more. And then after we got it converted, or we got it downloaded down here, we're gonna drag this over here into the file converter. And we're gonna select image SVG and click convert. And then hopefully it'll do it pretty quickly. it's done you'll be able to download it desktop and we're just going to call it mask ai all right and then we're going to do blender now starting in blender you're going to go file import svg and then navigate to where you saved it over in the right hand side we're going to click on the first curve Scroll down, holding shift, and select the last curve. And we're gonna size it up nine, and we're gonna size it up nine again. And then we're gonna rotate it on the X axis, 90. And then we're just gonna size it up even more. Just move it towards the center. I'm just gonna delete this bottom plane. That's how my default looks. I mine just starts at the bottom. And uh, now that we have this centered, I'm going to select one of the objects, go to the material. I'm just going to change it to white so it's a little bit easier to see what we're working on. Uh, so what I'm going to be doing with this is I'm going to be mirroring the right side onto the left side. So anything that's on the left side that can be mirrored, I'm just going to go through and delete and clean up and make it look real good. So let's do that real quick. So delete that, delete these. All this is going to be mirrored. All of these are going to be mirrored. And this will be mirrored. Oh, and then I don't want this. I'm just going to clean up a little bit of the things I don't want on this side. Don't want that or that or that. Or these center ones. That. So now that I have the mask cleaned up, I'm gonna do Shift A to add a new object, and then I'm just gonna add an empty plane excess in the middle. We're gonna select one of these objects on the right side, go over to the modifiers. We're just gonna add a mirror. So another mirror object. I'm just going to choose the empty that we just put on there. 
Now after choosing that, you can see it's mirrored over to the other side. <clears throat> we have this selected. We're gonna hit A to select everything. Control L, which is the link transfer data menu. And we're just gonna copy the modifiers. And that'll mirror it across the empty for everything. You can see it looks a little bit off. I'm wondering if that means because, because the empty is not centered. So let's click on the empty. Now the empty is centered. Just looks like the curves aren't perfectly centered. So let's select all the curves again. Hit G, X to move them on the X. I'm just gonna center them. There we go. You can see these ones that are in the center are being mirrored even though they don't need to be mirrored. That's okay for now. We'll uh, delete the mirror modifier at the end before we do all the more technical stuff. All right, so now that we have that, we're gonna add some modifiers just to get it going basically. So we are selected on one on the right side. We're gonna add a solidify at 0 0.004. And then if you hit three on your nums pad, you'll go to the side. You can see it looks like it's kind of thick, but that's because we're gonna put subdivision surface on it. And after we do that, it won't be as thick as that. So now that we have the solidify on, we're gonna drag the mirror to the end. Every time we add a modifier, we're just gonna drag the mirror to the end. So the next modifier we're gonna add is a remesh. Put it before the mirror. On voxel, we're gonna set it to 0 0.00135. See that gives us a sort of like chunky look. And now to combat that a little bit, we're gonna add a subdivision surface after that. And we're just gonna turn the steps up to three. So you can see it's pretty smooth. So it'll look pretty nice in the final. So just turn it back down to one. It doesn't really look that good at one, but then we're just gonna turn the render one up to three. That way it won't bog your computer down in the viewport by doing a lot of division, but it'll do it when we're rendering it. Now that we have that object still selected, hit A again to select all your objects. Control L, copy modifiers, and you'll see that'll copy the modifier to everything. Now if we switch to the rendered view, you can see we can't really see anything because there's no lights, so we're just gonna go up here and uncheck the lighting for a second. You can see this one right here looks kind of weird has this sort of black sort of distortion on it. That's because it's being mirrored and just overlaid on itself. <clears throat> so how to combat that is we're just gonna go over here into the modifier stack and we're just gonna delete the mirror. Same with these ones up here. We're just gonna go to the modifier stack, delete the mirror, delete the mirror, delete the mirror. And then on some of these smaller ones, you can see this remesh is kind of destroying this. So I'm gonna leave it on, but I'm just gonna make it even smaller just by a little bit, just so we can see more of the object. Something like that. Like this one right here, it's kind of destroying this upper part. We're just gonna go through and turn this down. Again, this is abstract. If you want it to look exactly like it, you don't have to use any of the remesh of the subdivision surface. I just find it looks nice and abstract. Cool. And now that we have this sort of basic thing imported, the next step we're gonna do is we're gonna import the bust of the human face and do some sort of detail work. Go file, import, obj. Oop, file, import, obj. Navigate to where you saved it. And we're just gonna size it up, move it down and move it back. I just sort of line it up, get it sized up. See the eyes are sort of lined up with where they are on this image. And that's what we're going for. But if we go to the side, it's not really lined up that much. So for this whole next part, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hit three on the nums pad to go to the side view, click on objects, move them back on the Y axis and rotate them by double tapping R after you reset the origin. 
to get things looking more like they're actually a part of like a mask. So this part is a little bit more tedious. So I'm just gonna fast forward through this part while I go through and make all the objects nice and lined up. One thing you can do before I start speeding this up, I'm just gonna select all of them and I'm just gonna set all the origins to the geometries at once. That way when I rotate stuff, it's all ready to go. So boom, yeah, there we go, let's go through. Uh, one thing I'm also gonna do during this <clears throat> is I'm gonna be deleting things that I don't want, like I don't, don't necessarily want that there and I don't necessarily want like this around the eyes, so I'm just gonna delete that. So let's uh, fast forward and get to lining all these objects up. Now that I have this nice and lined up, if we switch to the rendered view, you can see we're getting this sort of thing, which looks kind of interesting. I'm gonna switch back just to the viewport shading. I'm gonna select all the curves. I'm gonna hit Alt D to duplicate them. You can see we're dragging them around. I'm just gonna right click, and then I'm gonna do Control J to join them. And then if you click off and click back on, you can see on curve 37, we have this sort of copied version. I'm just gonna move this out on the X axis and just rotate it on the Z axis and then just move it out on the X axis again. So we're getting some more interesting sort of mask stuff building here. I feel like that's probably enough for the face. So I'm just gonna go back up and click on the camera. Just move it back on the Y so we can see a little bit more. Cool, and then if we go to the viewport shading, in this but that is because we are not using our own lighting so let's just turn our lighting back to what we want you can see some of these objects are getting that weird sort of black banding so i'm just going to click on it and click delete same with this object click on it and click delete and now that we have our mask and everything built we're going to go up into shading switch to world and import some HDRIs that I will be linking below. This is one that I like using for a lot of stuff. It's the APRI HDRI pack. I will link to everything. I'm gonna be using the Lagoon one because I like the blueness of it. I'm just gonna connect that to the color. Once I put that into the environment texture, I just switch to the viewport shading. If I just turn the strength up, it's looking pretty nice. I'm going to go over here to the render properties, go to film, and just turn transparent so we can't see the background. I'm going to click on the human bust. I'm 
just gonna delete all the materials on it. You can do whatever you want with materials. I'm just gonna put a simple glass shader on here just so I can see what I'm doing. I just give us sort of a cool look very nice and easily. Then I'm gonna click on this objects in the middle of the masks. I'm gonna go back to layout. I'm just putting a simple material on this one. So I'm just gonna change this by clicking use nodes. And then I'm just gonna go glossy. I'm just gonna turn the glossiness almost to zero. So we're getting this look. Everything looks sort of blocky right now, but remember that it's just because the subdivision surface we have on it is set to only show us one in the viewport and three in the render. So if I just turn it up to three real quick and right click shade smooth, everything's gonna be looking like that in the final, not like that, so don't worry. This is just saving us on CPU. And then when we have the one that we join selected, you can hit slash on the numbs pad to isolate it to make sure that you are on the right one. I'm just gonna duplicate this again, right click, and then we're gonna go back to viewport shading while we're doing this. We're gonna go object, relation, make single user, object data material. And then in this, we're gonna delete the subdivision surface. And then we're going to add just, we're going to actually uh, go to object, convert to mesh, but we should delete the mirror before we do that. Because as you see now, we move it around. If we applied the mirror, we wouldn't be able to move it around and it wouldn't be mirrored. So we're just gonna delete the mirror again. Go object, convert, if I can find that, to mesh. Then we're gonna add a mirror back to it, back to the empty. And now it's a mesh, but it's mirrored on there. So what we're gonna do is hit slash on the nums pad to isolate it. We're gonna add a wireframe modifier. Let's just put this before the mirror. We're gonna change it from even to relative. We're just gonna turn it up a little bit so it's thicker. And then we're gonna go add a decimate modifier, drag this all the way to the top. And we're just gonna turn this down until we get something kind of what we like. I like how that looks. Hit slash again on the nums pad to unisolate it. You can see it's adding some sort of cool lines on top of that. I'm just gonna go on this and delete the material and add a new one. We're just gonna add a emission material to it. If we turn off the overlays and turn the emission up, you can see what it's doing. I feel like that's adding almost a little too much. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go up here, I'm gonna add a build. I'm gonna put the build before the mirror so that it's symmetrical. We're gonna check this randomize. And down here in the timeline, we're just gonna turn it up a little bit so it gives us some sort of lines. You can see what this is doing is it's just like randomly adding them up to the point of a length of 100. If you wanted to add less at a time, you can set this length to like 250. And then when you drag it up, it'll add it more slowly. I feel like something around that probably looks nice with everything. And then I'm just gonna go to this. I'm just gonna change the color on it to like green. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna duplicate this wireframe one again by hitting Alt-D, right click so it's in the same spot. We're gonna go objects, relation, make single user object data material. I'm gonna delete the material on it. And then I'm gonna to go to the modifiers and then delete the build. And then I'm just gonna add it back another material and I'm just gonna make it a glass material, but not all the way down rough. Let's do 0.3. And then if we switch back to rendered view, you can see it right there. And then I'm going to add a subdivision surface after the wireframe. And this will add a very sort of cool effect. If we switch to local view, you can see it's doing this. If we turn it up to two, it's connecting them. If we turn it up to three and shade smooth, it looks really nice on the outside of stuff. So that's how we're getting that look. I just wanna see what this would look like real quick as three. 
So you see everything looks a lot nicer once we're gonna render it. And that is the basics of how to turn the mid the Dolly 2 AI thing into a sort of complex mask. You can do a lot more animation, you can do more sculpting, you can do more materials, but that is how you would turn the basics of it into this in Blender, only using free things online and not having to own any Adobe software and all that. Uh, the assets for this will be provided in the description below. The link to everything I used will be in the description below. The music I used will be below. I hope you guys learned something. I hope this inspired you to try something new. Maybe incorporate some AI into your workflow and see how it will impact what you do. Uh, if you like this, please like this, subscribe, and share this with other people who you think might enjoy. Uh, have a great rest of your day. Go out there and create something.